Komm hier, mein Little Jacky, nur aufs Mut, mein Backy, have a bit of Kacki, till the boat comes in. Tanz to the Daddy, sing to the Mummy, tanz to the Daddy, to the Mummy, sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the boat comes in. Debris of a life. He didn't leave much, did he? He left this place. Yes, Stoker's kingdom. Now it's yours, Billy. What an inheritance. Hmm. It's all he lived for. We must do our best to preserve it. I wish you could have seen the turnout at his funeral. Look, he'd have been furious. Patients suffering from TB and malnutrition, standing about in the cold. If he was watching from the Elysian fields, I bet his language made St Peter's ears burn. Were there any relatives? He mentioned a son who taught at a public school, but they didn't get on. Do you think we want any of their stuff? Oh, I shouldn't think so. I don't suppose this is what they're wearing on the playing fields of Eton this year. Mum? Dad? This is Matt. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Linton. Mr. Linton. What? Mr. Headley. Uh, all is down. Well, it's a grand place you've got here, lad. Must set you back a bit, eh? Fifteen bob a week. Did you hear that, Mother? Fifteen bob a week. Aye. And where's your employer? This Mr Ford we've heard so much about. He uh, moved out, ma'am. Moved out? When? About a week ago. For good? Aye. You never told us? Well, I didn't want you to start fretting about my reputation. So, you've been biding here alone, then? Just the two of you? No, Janet's been living in. Oh, good. Can't have the neighbours gossiping, can we, Mr Headley? Not in a smart neighbourhood like this. Fifteen bob a week, eh? And you can manage, can you, now that Mr Ford's not paying his share? Aye, we can manage. What about the furniture? Oh, you said we can keep anything the dolly that his wife doesn't want. She's your sister, isn't she? Aye. Run off with another man. Aye. We take marriage very serious in our family, Mr Headley. I hope you're not going to run off and leave our Sarah. Oh, ma'am. I take it serious in all, Mrs Litton. That's why I took so long to decide after Sarah proposed to us. She proposed to you? Went down on a bended knees. Said she'd been looking for a husband for years. And I was a last chance. So I took pity on her. <laughs> I do believe you're making fun of us, Mr Headley. Well, you asked for it, Mother. Talking about him running off and leaving his wife. They've only just published the bans. No, Tom, we mustn't. Who says? Mr Hodges. Mr Bloody Hodges. I bet whenever he wants a bit cuddle with his wife, he has to serve it with one of his papers. The trouble is, I'm not your wife. Not yet. I think I need reminding. I'm going to go back to Mum and Dar every night, just like when I was a bairn. Oh, I know, Pet, and I hate it when you leave us. But I've got to get me divorce. Otherwise, our bairn's going to be born a Ford, not a Seton. Boy, one night together, it's not much to ask. Suppose that Proctor fellow's watching. Oh, don't be daft. He's got better things to do than hang around Gary Bowley Street. It's his job, man, to make sure we're not, not cohabiting. You don't want us here. That's it, isn't it? Of course I want you, pet. I want you more than anything else in the world. But we've got to be sensible. Just a few moments, then we'll have the rest of our lives together. I want you now, tonight. No, it's not worth the risk. <sighs> Why well, get us a drink, then? You went for me? Ah, yes, Mr Ford. My name's Pritchard from Hodges, Brighton, Swinnerton, Solicitors. Why? Right. Uh, may I offer you a drink? Thanks a lot, Scotch. Uh, two large whiskies, please. Certainly, sir. I'm afraid there's been a rather unfortunate development with regard to your wife's petition for divorce. And in view of the new situation, uh, we want to know how you wish us to proceed. We? The firm. I hired a man, not a firm. <laughs> Mr Hodges has a great deal on his plate at the moment, Mr Ford, so he's asked me to take over this case. Uh, but don't worry, I specialise in matrimonial work. Your wife, though I say it myself, could not be in more capable hands. So what do you want me for? We received our instructions from you. And it is for you to decide whether you wish to, uh, to provide us with further evidence. Further evidence? Hodges said that statement I gave him was enough. Uh, indeed it was, Mr Ford. Unhappily, the hotel porter who signed the statement, the one who witnessed you and your lady friend together in your room, is no longer with us. He's left Scarborough? Departed this entire veil of tears, Mr Ford. Died of a heart attack two days ago. You mean I've got to go through the whole thing again? If you both still want to divorce. <laughs> 
Buy that one, please, Dolly. <laughs> it, uh, it may be a blessing in disguise. I understand that on the previous occasion there was some question of collusion between you and your wife. Excuse me, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I suggest, therefore, that if there is to be a subsequent visit to Scarborough, you do not consult her about it in advance. She'll want to know what's holding things up. I shall merely inform her that our key witness is no longer available, but that steps are being taken to find a replacement. You do that, bonny lad. But she won't believe you. <laughs> Look at the time. Ten past eleven, and where's our Tom? You didn't do a fine well where he is. It shouldn't be with Dolly this time of night. What's it got to Jack Ford, hiring an expensive lawyer, if they don't do as he tells them? Well, it's not all that late. Got precious little time to themselves. Oh, aye. Hey. You make them work hard for the money, don't you, both of them? Well, what do you expect? I don't pay canny wages for folk to sit around on the backside. Folk. That's all art to you, isn't it? Folk. Oh, no, Bella, don't start. Tom's your son, Bill, and you should be worried about him. Worried? What for? Well, I've watched them this past week. Pacing around the room like a caged animal. Thinks of this place as a prison. Prison? What the hell are you on about? There's no bars at the window. Aye, there's bars in Garibaldi Street keeping him out. Oh, none of my making. Well, maybe not. But he blames you just the same. Having to come back to Gala Shield, live apart from his woman, push you around all day. He was happy at that Duke's place and you were the one that took him away from it. He all I did was offer him a job. Look, if he doesn't like it, he can hand his notice in tomorrow. Oh, he'll not do that. He'll try and stick it out for Dolly's sake. All right. Can he last that one? Honest now. Do you know, the first week's taken's over at Garibaldi Street. Can't run the other two shop foot together. Hey, well, you may be due for a rise, then. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Well, I'll be off, then. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Are not going to kiss us goodnight? I'm biting here. No! I don't care if there's a hundred proctors outside. I'm not leaving. Oh, Tom, don't be so daft. It's daft. I'm just coming to miss us. No, man, you're going to spoil everything. You're the one that's spoiling it. You're building a big wall between us. I love you, Dolly. I know, pet. And I love you and all. Well, prove it, then. I can't, man. Not that way. Not yet. No, you prove it now or we're finished. I mean it. If I go throughout that boat tonight, I'm not coming back. So it's up to you. Do you want us to go or not? Tom. There's a subject we've never discussed. Something you've never brought up. What? Your best man. Ah, oh, yeah. I've been thinking about it. There's no to think about, Matt. You've got to ask Jack Ford. I can't. Not after trying to beat his brains out. That's history. He accepted your apology. I know, but uh, someone else wants to be invited and all. Who? Eddie Morton. Eddie Morton? Your best man's supposed to be a Mara, or a union official. He thinks he is me Mara. He's got no one else, Sarah. No one except them... Political comrades of his, and he hasn't got long to live. That's no reason. It's something else and all. If I pick Jack, Eddie will never forgive us. You think I've gone over to the capitalists? No, him. It's not important what Eddie Morton thinks. Well, we have to work together, pet. It's save a lot of bother. Bother? For heaven's sake, Matt, Jack Ford saved your life. Aye. And if you pick some other fella because it's going to save you bother, I'll never forgive you. He spent the night with her. Aye. Duff, that's what it is. Just plain duff. Aye. Well, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do? You're his father, Bill. It's up to you to tell him not to... Not to be such a fool. He's a grown man. He doesn't need us to tell him. That grown man is behaving like a bairn. That lawyer told him if he didn't keep away from Dolly, she might not get a divorce. If he carries on like this, he'll be living in sin for the rest of their lives. Aye. Aye. Is that all you've got to say? Aye. Aye. Aye, look, that's all I've got to say, because every time I open my mouth, he jumped down my throat. Look, yesterday I was supposed to be some kind of monster making my son's life a misery. The day I'm supposed to have a cosy little chat with him over the temptation of the flesh. Well, he's got to be told. All right, I'll have a word with him. What the hell? Oh, Billy. That'll be old Billy's doing what? that. Mad Headley's invited us to his wedding. Oh, that's nice. Nice, yeah, it's a bloody stupid, that's what it is. Oh, why, it's a party. It's a long time since we've been to a party. You're not thinking of going. 
Oh, we're both going to do us a world of good. Oh, Bella, man, there's neither of us up to going to bloody parties. I am. And if you'll not come with us, I'll go on my own. But you not. Well, I'm not having you dancing the gear fandango with any of them union officials. We're well, not without me there to watch you anyway. Dolly. I'm sorry, Pat. It's a bit late to be sorry now, isn't it? Why, I just wanted to be sure. I'm sure you weren't using Pudges as an excuse. Excuse for what? You're keeping away from us. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Aye. Well, hurry up and get dressed then. I've got to open the shop in half an hour. Hey, who in the world can that be? The Proctor. I bet it's the bloody Proctor. He's caught us. Well, you best let him in. He'll not go away. Mr. Pritchard, he works for Mr. Hodges. Oh, aye. Mr. Seaton, I presume? Uh, that's right, aye. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Ford. That's all right. The room's in a bit of a mess, I'm afraid. I came early, as uh, I understand you're busy during the day. But I expected to find you alone. Aye, that's, uh, that's my fault, just as not to stay. Then may I ask why you disregarded her request? Oh, I had a bit too much to drink last night. I'm afraid the judge would not accept that as a mitigating circumstance. And if you want us to act for you, I must have your assurance that such misbehaviour will not occur again. It won't. You have me word. Good. Now, if I may speak to Mrs Ford alone. Oh, aye. I'll see you later, Dolly. Mm. Very personable young man. May I ask what he does for a living? He's, he's in transport. Transport, eh? An expanding trade, I should imagine, with plenty of opportunity for advancement. <laughs> My dear Mrs. Ford, I hope it wasn't anything I said. I were given you board and lodging for one reason, Joe. So that you and Dolly can live apart until the divorce comes through. Now, if you cannot keep away from her, then you better go and set up a ring Garibaldi Street and save us a bit of money. Look, don't go on at us, Da. I know I did wrong. I told the lawyer. Dolly's lawyer. Aye. Found us together. Oh, dear God. What did he say? Well, he asked us not to do it again. I'll give him me word. I should hope so, and all. It's a fine way to repay Jack Ford for all the trouble he's gone to. Aye. Look, I know it's hard, son. Uh, there was times when your ma and me was courting it. Well, it was damned hard to leave her at night. But if a woman's worth waiting, she's worth waiting for. Eh, well, sitting such gallantry all of a sudden. Eh, and after you married, this time when you find it damn hard to come home and all. Yeah, I had a way, man. Every husband likes to think he's a rover, but he's, he's none too keen on roving if there's no dinner to come back to. Aye, way. I'll not be roving very far while I'm in this thing. Hey, how are you talking? Hurry up, sonny. I think we, uh, we should get over to Garibaldi Street. The porter at the hotel dropped dead, just like that. Even porters are not immortal, Mrs. Ford. Well, if he signed a bit of paper, is that not enough? Unfortunately, it was an unsworn statement, not an affidavit. He would have had to be cross-examined on it. So what do we do now? Oh, don't worry. Everything's in hand. It will just take a little longer than we thought. How much longer? A month or two. But that might be too late. Too late for what? Oh, maybe I should have told Mr Hodges I'm pregnant. Yes, indeed. You certainly should have been informed. So you see, we cannot wait. May I ask... Uh, is Mr. Seaton the father? Why? And did intimacy first take place before or after your husband's visit to Scarborough? Before. I see. Now, does it make any difference? It complicates matters, Mrs. Ford. It introduces fresh ramifications which will need careful consideration. Fresh what? We are suing for divorce against a guilty party. The law therefore assumes that we are innocent. But if we are pregnant by another man, we can no longer make that claim. I never said I was innocent. I'm the one that ran off. Nevertheless, we are the petitioner. And in this situation, we have only one course open to us. We must make a full and frank confession of our own adultery and ask the court to exercise its discretion. In which case, the alimony will be greatly reduced and there'll be no chance of maintenance for the child. I don't want alimony, and I can't ask Jack to pay for a bane that's not his. Then there's just one problem. What? Whether the judge will be prepared to forgive us our trespasses. Can we get it through before me time? When's that? Six months. It'll be touch and go, and it'll depend on your husband. Why? 
There are certain formalities. It's a question of how quickly he'd be prepared to complete them. He's playing games with us. I know he is. He never intended to give us me divorce. I don't think that's quite fair, Mrs Ford. It's hardly his fault that our witness expired before he had a chance to testify. You don't know Jack Ford, Mr Pritchard. He's the one that'll never forgive us our trespasses. Well, well, Miss Lytton, what a pleasant surprise. I want to talk to you, Mr Ford, but couldn't go somewhere else. This place makes us feel that nervous. There's no to be nervous about Bonnie Lass. Come and sit down. Cup of tea? Coffee? Oh, no, thanks. <clears throat> you and Matt published the bands yet? That's what I want to talk to you about. The bands? You need a priest for that. We've got a priest. So what's on your mind? Matt's best man. Oh, I. He wondered if, if you would... Why couldn't he ask him himself? Well, he thinks he might turn him down on account of that fight you had. If he asks anybody else, there'll be another fight. You'll do it, then. When's the wedding? A week on Saturday. Wellesley Street Church. Oh. Father Courtney, eh? Aye. Reception back at Lavender Avenue? Aye. Hired a caterers yet? No, I was going to ask if you could tell us how to go about the arrangements. I'll take care of that, Bonnie lass. I'll take care of the bill and all. There's no call for that, Mr Ford. I can afford it. You think I can't? You. You must be made of money living in a posh hotel like this. I'll pay for it, then. We'll have a double celebration. Double? You tying the knot, me untying it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. He told us what to send for you, then he started coughing blood, then he passed out. What's he been drinking? Whiskey. Just a drop, Doctor. More than a drop, Eddie. And I've warned you, every drop of alcohol has shortened your life. Oh, if I'm going anywhere, I'm not going to waste what time I've got, man. That's your privilege. Don't waste any more of mine, then. Well, you're not just going to leave, huh? I've warned him. If he's going to take me advice, I'm going to be responsible. All right, Doctor. All right. I'll try and keep off it. Your last chance, Eddie. Oh, fair enough. Well, get them home to bed. I'll call them after I finish my rounds. Well, isn't there anything you can do for him? Oh, there is. I can send to a sanatorium in Switzerland. Just tell us where to send the bill. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I think it's coming. It's taking a bit of a strain. I couldn't do that last week. Why, well, do you think it's about time we told Ma? No, there's no to tell her. Well, you could tell her there's some hope. Give us something to cheer her up. You think she needs cheering up? Aye, I do. Why, she looks that tired, Dar. I'm worried about her. I mean all. All right, take us to Gunnabally Street. See how that kind lass of yours is getting on making money. Father, would you like a cup of tea? Thank you, no, Mrs. Seaton. This is not a social visit. Is it about our Billy? Yes, I'm worried about him, Mrs. Seaton. Since Dr. Stoker died, he's been on his own at Wellesley Street. I'm afraid he's been overdoing it. Is he ill? I believe he's on the verge of some sort of breakdown. So now you've broken him. You want us to pick up the bits, is that it? Well, that's a little unjust, Mrs. Seaton. Unjust? Do you call it just that we should spend all that money putting him through college? So he could work at Wellesley Street for a night. That we should scrape and save so them lost sheep of yours would reap the benefit. He chose his own path. No one forced him to follow it. He couldn't get a job. That's why he came to you. He could have left when he gained that appointment with the Fitters Union. With you going on about God needing him at Wellesley Street. But he doesn't believe in God, Mrs. Seaton. He believes in socialism. It's not hard to make it sound like the same thing. No. Whatever his beliefs, he's behaved like a true Christian. But he's paid a heavy price. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I want you to help me persuade him to come home for a bit. If he doesn't take a rest, the consequences may be serious. I asked for your help once. Yes, I remember, Mrs. Seaton. You said I was hard all through. Well, we'll have to take a taxi. I'm not up to walking. I have my car. It's outside. Oh, Mr. Ford, sir. There's a lady waiting for you in the lounge, sir. Same one? Oh, no, sir, no. This one's a real lady. Lady Caroline. You do recognize me, then? Where on earth have you been? Out. 
I mean, since you got back from Scarborough, we haven't been favoured with a visit. No, I've been pretty busy. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. What? Wordsworth, darling. You can't have been that busy. It's hard work being a capitalist. All work and no play make Jack persona definitely non grata. Still, if you've been making lots of money... I've been doing a deal with your father's nephew. Cousin Friedrich. Yes, he told me. Apparently, he's very impressed with your grasp of tactics, which is more than I am. You made a bad move, have I? You haven't made any move. You were gone a whole week. Well, it's a grand place, Scarborough. Anyway, I needed a holiday. That chorus girl must have been a fascinating creature. It's going to be a big star. New Mary Lloyd. You're a bastard, Jack. But I suppose that's history. Just like your husband, you said. Yes, I do seem to collect them, don't I? Still, as long as it's all over, so no more chorus girls. Of course not. Good. Your tea, my lady. Thank you. Hmm? Oh, fetch another cup, will you? So, what have you been up to? I mean, why the sudden transposition to these exotic surroundings? I'm Matt Headley. He's getting married. That was in the way. The Royal Saracen isn't cheap. So they tell me. Status symbol? Maybe. Your dealings must be proving very lucrative, Jack. When are you going to give me a chance to invest? In what? You. When the time comes, one enough. But not yet? No. Well, let me know, Jack. It's so frightfully difficult to know what to do with one's spare capital these days. Well, yes, I know. I have the same trouble myself. Still, Matt's will take care of some. Oh? I'm the best man. A lot of expenses, a lot to organise. Cars, photographs, flowers. Oh, I could do the flowers. You? Yes. I could help you. Drive you around, that sort of thing. Champion. You can take us to Wellesley Street for a start. I've got to talk with the priest. He's not in there. Perhaps he's in his room. Billy? Billy! Mum? What's the matter, son? I, I don't know. I just can't stop shaking. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. Now, let's get him out of here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, You've no business to ask him, Sarah. The bridegroom's the one who picks the best man. You did pick him. I just passed on the message. I told you I was thinking of asking Eddie Morton. No, you weren't, Pat. How do you know? Because I'm not marrying a man who thinks politics is more important than friendship. Well, Eddie, you have to be told. Ah, oh, well, I've done my bit. I'll leave that to you. Anybody about? Where's Father Courtney? Oh, Dr. Seaton's in a bad way. The father took him home. How long will he be? About half an hour. He said he'd be back as soon as he could. All right, we'll wait. Any chance of a cup of tea? Well, all the cups are chipped. Oh, don't mind her. She'll drink it out the saucer. I don't think it would make you very popular. What? The thought that's passing through your mind. Why, I'm going to have to watch myself with you, aren't I, Bonnie Lass? You certainly are, Bonnie Lad. You certainly are. Pay him for it. You're letting Jack Ford pay for your wedding. It's a peace offering, Eddie. Can't very well turn him down. Of course you could. He's a buster's man and always will be, and that makes him your enemy. What about our differences? We still mean Mara. <laughs> I'll tell you why he's your Mara, brother. She's got a nose for money. And money means more to you than principal. Oh, That's why he's your best man, isn't it? He bought himself a bloody job. If you don't shut about flatten you. Flatten the dime, ma? You wouldn't do that, would you, ma? Even you wouldn't do that. No, oh, forget it, just forget it. You'll come anyway, eh? I see. Just you disappoint me, brother. I thought that you and me. I thought we'd begin to see eye to eye. It's now to do with you and me. To do with me and Jack. We've been through a lot together. There's nothing to stop him giving us a wedding present if he wants to. It's not as if we're short of a few, Bob. Isn't it? Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, if he's not short of a few, Bob, what's he doing selling his watch? What? Well, Lenny Baines was just here. And his dad owns a second-hand jewelers in Mafeking Street. And he told Len that Jack Ford sold me his watch this morning. Jack sold his watch. Got to get away, man. It's true. Are you sure it was Jack? Well, he might have lost his teeth, but there's no wrong with his eyesight. 
So does Watcher. So, you get a director's fee for the company you and Horry set up in a few months' time. Aye. And he's going to pay you for your land in a few months' time. Aye. With a percentage of the housing estate in a few years' time. Aye. Meanwhile, you're having to fork out for a divorce, a wedding, and a very expensive hotel. Aye. Well, it seems to me, my darling, that as a long-term investment, you look very inviting. But your short-term yield appears to be a little on the low side. You've got to speculate to accumulate, Bonnie Lass. Granny Ford's rule number one. And she died broke? How did you guess? I was thinking, opals are definitely out this year, so perhaps... No. Why not? Never take a loan until you're sure you can pay it back. Granny Ford's rule number two. Oh, can I be of any help? Uh, Father Courtney, uh, my name is Ford. We came about Matt Headley's wedding, but I understand Billy Seaton's been taken ill, so if it's not convenient... It's only too convenient, as you can see, all his patients have gone. Uh, nothing serious, I hope. Well, no, there's nothing physically wrong. He just collapsed out of sheer exhaustion. How long is he going to be laid up? Impossible to tell. I think it's likely to be quite a while. Mm. And what's going to happen to this place? We'll just have to shut up shop till he recovers. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Lady Caroline Summers, Father Courtney. How do you do? Lady Caroline, would that be your car outside? It would. Then it seems we have something in common. Well, don't tell me you have a yellow rose. No, a white one we use as an ambulance. I suppose you wouldn't care to donate that magnificent vehicle of yours to the same cause. I'm afraid you'll have to ask my father. It belongs to him. Your father? The Duke of Bedlington. He's a soft touch for worthy causes. Then I'll drop him a line. Now, you wanted to discuss the arrangements for Mr. Headley's wedding. Yes, sir. Lady Caroline's kindly agreed to arrange the flowers, and now I've come about the hymns. Have the bride and groom any particular favourites? No, they left it to us. Now, then I suggest we start with the voice that breathes o'er Eden, which evokes God's blessing on the happy couple, and also mentions the high mysterious union which naught on earth may break. Oh, hi. Maybe I should have had that at my wedding. Rest. We all need a rest, woman. We don't all expect to be waited on hand and foot. We didn't expect out. I haven't been for Father Courtney. I've never known the state he was in. Oh, I haven't been for Father Courtney. He wouldn't have been in such a state. It's not his fault. However, Billy went to Wellesley Street of his own free will. Oh, aye. Well, he's made his own bed and nails over there. Let him lie on it. He's got nowhere else to go, man. Aye, lad, it makes me wild. Oh, Tom's worked all them years down the pits. Oh, Billy could become a doctor. What's he doing with his education? Works for bloody washers and turns himself into an invalid. Keep your voice down. And there's no need to swear. He's laid up. Who's he going to pay old Tom back? That's what I want to know. Well, he's paid us back a fair bit, Doc. Over 20 pound. 20 pound. He was your 300 odd. This rate, you'll be looking to get the interest. And you never talk about but money. Your son's sick, Bill. Really sick. And all you can think about is how much wages he's losing. All right, so he's sick. Who's well, going to look after him? You? You can hardly look after yourself. Oh, just needs a bit peace and quiet. Soon be on his feet again. All right. I'll tell you something, though, but he's not going back to Wellesley Street. If he wants to use this place to nurse and home, he can follow this doctor's orders. Hey, Doc. Do you not going to tell her? Tell her what? Why, about your legs. Oh, been complaining again, has he? Why? Who? Well, I don't want to hear. I've had about as much as I can stand for one day. Well. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Have a word. There's another lady waiting for you, sir. And in view of the name she gave, I thought best to uh, give you uh, advance warning, sir. What name? Mrs. Ford, sir. Well, in that case, I think I'd better make myself scarce. Au revoir, darling. Have a happy reunion. Thank you. Well, what can I do for you, Bonnie Lass? You can do what you said you'd do. Give us a divorce. Well, you've, uh, you've heard then, uh, about the port. I have heard, and I'll tell you what I think and all. I don't think that fellow ever existed. I think you wrote that bit of paper yourself and got one of your maris to sign it. And why would I go to Scarborough? How do I know you went to Scarborough? I've only got your word for it. Only my word? You mean you don't trust me? I never trusted you, Jack. I loved you, but I never trusted you. Whenever you gave us something with your right hand, I always knew you'd take it back with your left. Well, there's no more to be said, then, is there? Just this. You made a bargain with Tom, and I'm going to see you keep it. Our Ben's going to be born with his father's name. If he's not, if we have to say he's yours, I'm going to sue you for maintenance and alimony. I mean it, Jack. I'll take you for every penny you've got. Bah, you've got a nerve. And so have you and all. Being Santa Claus to Matt before you've settled your account with Tom and me. Footing the bill for weddings while there's still a divorce to be paid for.
Uh, can we have a bit of rehearsal, please, ladies and gentlemen? Order now, order. Well, I trust you're all enjoying yourselves. Right. It's not me you've got to thank. That's all right. It's Jack Ford. He's very kindly assumed the financial responsibilities of this joyous occasion. Mind you, I tried to talk him out of it, but I'm happy to say I didn't succeed. <laughs> so brace silence, please, for one of the most generous fellas that any bride's father could wish for, Jack Ford. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the last time I made a speech, it was for Jory Watson, and he managed to get himself elected by a few hundred votes. But if I reckon if I hadn't put me all in, he'd have won by a street. <laughs> so it's lucky Matt's not dependent upon me to get him elected. He's managed to do that all by himself. As you know, Matt and me went through a fair bit in France, and he said something to me once. I'll never forget it. After Passchendaele it was, with all them casualties on both sides. And by, he said, the world will take a bit populating after this. Well, I'm glad to see he's finally made a start. <laughs> and with as fair a lass as any old soldier could wish for. Yeah, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to raise your glasses to Matt and Sarah. Matt and Sarah. Sarah. God bless you, Pat. How are you then, Matt? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jack. On behalf of uh, Mrs. Headley and me, <laughs> I'd like to say a few words about that best man of mine. I owe him everything, this house, my job, even my life. But a few weeks ago we had, well, we had a bit of a fight. It wasn't his fault. We could have settled it over a couple of drinks, but I didn't give him a chance. And any other marrow would have given us me marching orders. But Jack Ford isn't like that. To show he'd forgiveness, he offered to pay for our wedding. Oh. So in appreciation of a special kind of marrow, I bought him a present. Oh, and I hope you like it, Jack. Why must it cost a fortune? I know more than all this. Come on then, cut your cake. Let's have some music. <laughs> How is Billy, Mrs. Seaton? Oh, he's coming along nicely. Now he's got someone to look after him. Uh, he's still in bed? No, he's sitting up, fretting about what's happening in Wellesley Street. Well, he's not going back there, no mind. I've told him. He's not going back. But that's up to him, isn't it? After all, he's a grown man. Aye, he's a grown man with debts. As soon as he's fit enough to work, I'm going to see he pierce them. I'll come and see him tomorrow, if I may. You will not. You'll keep away from him. You've done enough. You've got enough to answer for as it is. But I only wanted to say goodbye. I've been transferred to another parish. Oh, aye. It seems the bishop thinks I've outlived my usefulness here in Gallifield. Oh. <laughs> I'll take a home. Jack? Oh. Dolly tells me you haven't got the evidence for the divorce. Oh, I lost our chief witness. Man, she's in a terrible state. She thinks you've tricked her. Oh, you know I haven't. All I know is she's going to get the divorce before the ban arrives and time's getting short. Listen, Tom, if I tell you something, can you keep it from Dolly? Why? Because she's not supposed to know. <laughs> know what? I'm going back to Scarborough. At this time, I'll find a witness with a clean bill of help. <laughs> I think it's a shame, Mr. Morton, that Matt's chosen someone like that instead of you. I think it's a crying shame. Well, I warned him, Pat. You can't say I didn't warn him. A district secretary who picks a couple is his best man. Some of the lads going to wonder which side he's on. I think he might lose his job. Well, it hasn't done him any good. Of course. Oh, there'll be compensations, Pat. Anybody who hangs on to Jack Ford's coattails is bound to make money. What shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Hey, why well, you're a canny lass and make no mistake. Here, have some more of this stuff, Beth. Uh, no, and I don't mean to be rude, Mr. Morton, but uh, haven't you had enough? Enough? Oh. <laughs> I'll let you into a little secret. Uh, uh, Janet. Janet. I could drink this room dry and it still wouldn't be enough, Beth. Lovely wedding, Mr. Ford. Lovely. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Mrs. Lytton. Them flowers along the altar rail. Friesias, weren't they? Hey, don't ask me. They were arranged by a friend of mine. I bet it was a lady. Aye, aye, it was. I thought so. I said to me husband, I said, there's a lady behind them flowers. Is she here? Uh, no, unfortunately, she had a previous engagement. 
take my advice, Mr. Ford. Hang on to her. Anybody that can arrange flowers like that will make your house look like a palace. Good excuse. What do you say that for? You've embarrassed the lad. Tom, uh -huh. stay with us tonight, Pat. Well, if there's not going to be any divorce, there's no point in depriving ourselves, is there? There is going to be a divorce. Have you been talking to Jack? Aye. What did he say? Well, uh, I can't tell you. You can't tell us? For heaven's sake, man, it's my divorce. Well, Dolly, you're not supposed to know what's going on. Oh, I see. Dolly! Dolly, but don't worry, it's going to be all right. How do you? Jack told us. And you believe him? Aye, I do. Well, you're a fool. A bigger fool than I took you for. How about a dance, me favourite sister? How about a little dance, eh, Mr. Seaton? Oh, Jack. Yes, since I've done it, dancing, I've forgotten how. Never in this world. If you'll excuse us, Mr. Seaton. Well, uh, use your hat. Go on, you take it, Jack. She's enjoying herself. You're a bit tired, Bonnie Lance. That's not very complimentary. Cool time job, is it? I can have to Billy. <laughs> How long before he's back to work? It's going to be a few weeks yet. A few weeks, mm -hmm. eh? You might have pulled down Wesley Street before then. Oh, I hope so, Bunny lad. Now bless the man that does it know. It's time to change. Aye. Well, I'm not oh, being <laughs> Pretty as a picture. Where are they going for the honeymoon? Scarborough. Same hotel. Aye. I fixed it for them. What? <laughs> You're a good fixer, aren't you, Jack Ford? Eh? Aye. Fix everything from elections to union officials. Drunk, Eddie. See things clearly when I'm drunk, Jack. You, for instance. I can see you for what you are. A trillion of class. Somebody who can fix everything but his own wife. He ought to be in hospital. Yes, my car's outside. It knows the way. Don't be sweet, Matt. Steady, steady, It's a long marrow. Sorry about this. Don't worry, bunny lad. Have a good time in Scarborough. Book a room for us for next week. He's dead. Are you sure? My word for it, Father. I've a lot of experience. Suppose you have. Oh, bugger. Sorry. No need to apologise. I couldn't have put it better myself. comfortable at the Royal Saracen. It would, indeed. I'm trying to keep away from comfort these days. Oh, I? Well, I like it too much, you see. Frightened to go and soft? I'm trying to divest, Mr. Ford, the way Dr. Stoker did. Not easy. Divest what? My excess baggage. I was born with quite a lot of it, you see. Silver spoon, eh? Oh, silver plate. It's funny. There you are, divesting. Here I am, collecting. Exactly. That's why you asked us back here, was it? A couple of days ago, a man from the council came to see me and said he'd had an inquiry about this place from a company called Pioneer Enterprises. All right. That wouldn't be anything to do with you, would it? Me? Whatever made you think that? Well, I wondered. You see, the inquiry was made the day after you came to see me with a delightful Lady Caroline. Ah, oh, there's a coincidence. Perhaps, but I'm worried about it, Mr Ford. You see, I should be leaving the Paris and Billy Seaton's ill and I don't want to leave this place undefended. You make it sound like a fort. That's exactly what it is, a small enclave where the defeated troops can find sanctuary. I'd hate it to fall into enemy hands. Oh, don't worry, Father. Fort won't forget what you did for them. You and Billy and Stoker. I don't mind if they forget us, but I am concerned that our work is perpetuated. You'll have to find somebody to take your place. I shall try. I'd like to feel sure there's a place to take. There's a verse from the Bible they made us learn it by heart at school. Something about, to him that hath shall be given. And from him that hath not shall be taken away. Yes. I must ask St. Matthew about that, if I meet him. Well, it's um, 
Time for even song. No, please, you stay and finish the bottle. Alone? Not alone, Mr. Ford. We'll have the ghosts of those who died here to keep you company. Sing to the mummy, dance to the daddy, to the mummy sing. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the fishy when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have a haddock when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the blood when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the mackerel when the wood comes in. Thou shalt have the fishy on a little dishy, thou shalt have the salmon when the wood comes in. <laughs> 